Hello, welcome to Drive Seat and to the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Now launched in 2015, this succeeds the Freelander and Freelander 2 as Land Rover's entry level offering. The Discovery Sport is available with a choice of four engines, three of which are petrols, ED4, TD4 and SD4. There's an SI4 which is a petrol version as well. The ED4 comes with either front wheel or four wheel drive and a six speed manual. The rest of the range are all four wheel drives and don't have the option of front wheel. The SD4 and SI4 both come with automatic as standard. I think you'll agree that the boxy looks of the Freelander have been well and truly ditched for this sleeker, more attractive Discovery Sport. We're testing the range topping HSE Dynamic Lux, which gets body kit to make it look even more attractive. So there's deeper front skirts, a revised grill, these deeper side sills, and then some black finishes. So we've got the black 19 inch alloys on this model. You get black wing mirror housings and a black roof. While around the back, it gets a redesigned bumper. Now, if you go for the more powerful diesel engine, this comes with seven seats, the entry level, just the five. This also gets a electric powered tailgate as standard. Usefully, like most Land Rovers, it's got a nice low lip so you can sit on the tailgate and put your wellies on or use it as an umbrella like today. It also helps getting the boot ready for its seven seat configuration. Currently in five, it offers 689 liters of boot capacity, which is pretty decent. There's a couple of electric buttons that lower the seats as well. So everything can really be controlled from here. There's also a button that'll put the electric tow bar out that's fitted as an optional extra on this model. First thing I need to do is remove the load cover but that instantly asks you a question where do you store it and yet yeah, I'm still to figure out where that should be to put the seats up pull the two handles and it's that easy to get it to seven seats now the problem is the capacity once that up is 189 liters which is no better than a city car so before I attempt to get into that third row, let's see what it's like in the second row. Well, I've got a nice high up seating position. I've got a really nice clear view round. This model's got the super expensive infotainment system on it for the rear. There's USB charger points, nice big door bin, some leather and good materials. There's loads of leg and knee room and decent foot room as well. Whilst headroom's not bad, it's not too cavernous but it will do now i can also get further comfortable in here or increase space for the rear so i can slide this bench back and forward i'm going to leave it in its furthest back position see what it's like behind but we'll remember that we can move it also with this lever here i can change the angle of my seat so i can sit with the rest of the bench or go much further back and become much more relaxed let's leave that upright and see what it's like in the back now using this lever at the top once again, lift and pull the seat forward. That's quite high and narrow, but I'm in just. So pull the seat back and yeah, for an adult, for me, there's not enough room, but I can actually change that to there. Now, if that's in that position, there's plenty of room. Okay, I'm a little bit Z shaped in here, but for shorter journeys as an emergency, it'd be fine. And for children, it's absolutely acceptable. In the front, it's very typically Land Rover, so there's nothing in here to really surprise you. You've got your big infotainment touchscreen at the top, dials through the middle with your ventilation, but then the off-roading section's been moved up a little. There's also the rotary gear selector that rises out of the dash when you start the car, which we've originally seen in Jaguars. It's a lovely place to be in here. It's not as stylish as many of the Range Rovers, but that will set this apart more as the Discovery brand. The plastics are nice and soft to touch and feel really robust. There's some lovely leathers in here, and these leather seats are comfortable and supportive. This seat's got 10-way electric support, so I can go up, down, tilt, rock, almost do anything but spin. It's also got three memory setting functions on the door, which is really helpful if you're swapping cars regularly. The steering wheel adjusts well for reach and tilt, so most should be able to find a comfortable driving position. I'm in the lowest seating setting, and I've got decent headroom, and that's thanks to the standard panoramic sunroof here. There's good storage in here. I've got a nice deep wide door bin. There's a anti-slip tray ahead of the gear selector. 
two cup holders under this nice gloss shiny cover and then the central bin under the armrest which isn't particularly deep but is useful and quite square. The armrest is then adjustable. The glove box itself is actually very well sized and light so it's not going to collapse on the passenger's knees. But let's get this thing on the road and see what it's like to drive. For more information on the Discovery Sport range and the full road test of this car, remember to visit the driver's seat website. Off the shelf, this costs £46,510 and really shows how upmarket the Discovery Sport and Freelander have gone. However, this model is absolutely bulging at the seams with extra kit. It's got a, over £11,000 worth of it. This version develops 178 brake horsepower and 319 pound-feet of torque. That's enough to get this from standstill to 60 miles an hour in 8.4 seconds. Claims it will return 53.3 miles per gallon and emits 139 grams per kilometer of CO2. The Disco Sport certainly doesn't feel fast. 8.4 to 60 is a little bit of a surprise really. It feels slower than that, but then that could be down to its level of refinement. It does pick up speed with little fuss. It just doesn't feel fast. And the engine's really quite growly when you ask it to get out of bed and do some work. The gearbox comes with a override sport button on the rotary dial and steering wheel mounted paddles. And they change gear reasonably quickly. There's a little delay, but bear in mind that this is set up more for economy than for sport. However, on the move, you'll never notice the gearbox at all. You even hardly hear a change in the engine pitch when you're just motoring along through town, cities pulling in and out and going between speed limits. It's really very refined, very silky and super classy. Under harder acceleration, the engine is a little bit raucous and can be a little bit loud on startup. The ride's set up to be soft rather than sporty, which is absolutely fine. It's quite wallowy and lofty. Now I can change that on my drive select mode to make it a little bit sporty and the ride doesn't suffer too much at all. However, this car's wearing 19 inch alloy wheels and that really takes away from some of the subtlety and beauty of the ride quality for the Discovery Sport. You get more of a firmer shunt through when you hit some road scarrings, which is really disappointing because having driven this without these alloys on, it's absolutely phenomenal. The Sport does roll a little through the bends, but you can feel the electronic wizardry underneath trying to keep it flat. It's a little bit like a yacht listing on a very gentle wave just as you go around the corner, but you can try, you can see it trying to stay as flat as possible. It's wonderfully damp though, go over a little crest at speed and it settles beautifully on a road that's got undulations all over the place. You just feel it wanting to settle down and sit you back still so you're not rocking and rolling all over the place grips as you would expect pretty good all the time but i was surprised to aquaplane on a little stream through a bend in some heavy rain yesterday the steering's well weighted it's got a really lovely consistency to it real creamy delivery it's going everywhere i want it to go so i've got no quibbles there the commanding driving position gives me a great amount of visibility out whether to the front or sides really helps maneuvering the car over the shoulder the rear pillar is a little bit squared off but this has front rear parking sensors and a rear view camera so any maneuvering when you're going backwards is really helped out whilst it's nice and quiet on the move there are some suspension noises that come through at lower speeds through bigger bumps Well, the Disco Sport's just so highly accomplished. It's, it can go anywhere, it can take you out to dinner in the evening and you don't feel like you've turned up in your Wellingtons. It's a great looking thing. It's also packed full of tech and is luxurious inside. I probably wouldn't consider this trim myself and I'd go for the HSC. It's got everything you need and will save you thousands whilst returning that beautiful, supple ride. Remember to check out the website for the full review on the Discovery Sport and subscribe to the YouTube channel for free whilst letting us know in the comment section below what you think of the Disco Sport.